I'm going to start answering Darlene's question, and I'm going to uh, answer it by firstly explaining the position of monogamous customary marriage, and then explain uh, the position of polygamous uh, customary marriages. For monogamous customary marriages, the monogamous customary marriages are automatically in community of property, irrespective of whether they were entered into before the coming into operation of the act, uh, uh, before and then after. But when the act was passed, only monogamous customary marriages which were entered into after the passing of the act were regarded as automatically in community of property. And those which were entered into before uh, the act had said that they continue to be administered by customer or to be regulated by customary law. This was challenged by, uh, by uh, Mrs. Gumete in the Gumete versus the president of South Africa. And the Constitutional Court declared that section that stated that monogamous customary marriages which were entered into before the coming into act, they declared that that provision is invalid and unconstitutional. As a result of that, uh, you must know that all monogamous customary marriages are automatically in community of property and then those which were entered into before the coming into act. Uh, they only became uh, out of community of uh, automatically in community of property after the constitutional court declared them to be so. Now, when we come to polygamous customary marriages, the position differs as to whether the marriage were entered into before the coming into act and after the coming into the act. Those which are entered into after the coming into the act, the husband, in terms of section 7, subsection 6, is required to bring a high court application and to request the court to approve the marriage contract which will regulate his marriage relationship. If the husband does not bring the marriage relationship, the polygamous marriage, the first wife and the husband, their marriage is going to be automatically in community of property, but the subsequent wife, their marriage is going to be out of community of property. This basically means that a husband can be married with two wives, but uh, have two different uh, marriage regimes governing their marriage. This is because uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal have held that if the husband does not bring in a high court application, this does not necessarily mean that the subsequent marriage is invalid. The marriage will continue to be valid as long as it was uh, validly and all the requirements were followed. As long as it was entered into in compliance with the act, the marriage will continue to be valid, but the marriage regime is going to be different between the parties. Uh, but if the husband brings a court application and the court approves the marriage contract, then the terms of that marriage contract will regulate the, uh, the proprietary consequences of this polygamous marriage. Also, you need to know that if the husband belongs to the Tsitsonga uh, custom and he enters into a marriage, a polygamous marriage, or he takes a feather wife or feather wife without bringing a high court application or without complying with section 7, subsection 6 of the act, this marriage, uh, the, sub, uh, the subsequent marriage is going to be automatically null and void. This is because men who belong to the Tsitsonga custom, before they can take another wife, they must get the consent of their spouses, of their wives. So if that consent is not obtained, the marriage, will, the subsequent marriage of the other wife will automatically be null and void. Okay, does anybody uh, have any question on polygamous 
after they coming into the act before i talk about the position uh, before coming into the act uh, for now uh, the hands that i'm going to take uh, are only those who are <laughs> sorry they are only those who are going to ask about polygamous marriage after they coming into the act yeah. okay uh, david david let hey, follow up uh, morning, ma'am. Um, I morning. was I was not going to ask about polygamous. I was going to ask about customary marriage. Um, in terms of you, one of one of the requirements is that the, the two parties must consent. Let's say they've consented or they've agreed to get married, and in before concluding of the customary marriages so of handing over the bride and doing that, and one of them decide I don't want to be involved in this customary marriage or in this marriage anymore um how does one go through uh, how does one go about uh, annulling that must we go through the court or can we just call the families to sit together and say okay our kids does not want to go through with this thing anymore or how does it work okay i'm writing it down i'll answer it okay, thanks. when i'm done here okay uh, alex yeah follow it's just a follow up uh, atlantic mm -hmm. question because when you presented on the on the Watonga culture, yeah. mm -hmm. who, a, a man will take uh, the second wife, but uh, as you right indicated that uh, the consent of the first wife is is very necessary. But I hear the, the the statement in the in the textbook that says if the first wife uh, withholds uh, the consent. Uh, the man has would not have any any choice but to divorce that part that wife is 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 it in addition to what you said that uh, the marriage will be nullified because yes. i see here that uh, mm. if if it's something that was followed before but uh, the 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 husband because the 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 wife cannot concur to the to, to the husband taking the second wife it means that uh, automatically that a husband would divorce the, the wife. Yes, remember, if the first wife does not consent, the husband cannot take another wife. So the only option that is left is the husband must divorce that wife and get married to whoever he now wants to get married into. But if the husband does not divorce the wife and further that he continues and enters into a marriage with another woman. That marriage will be null and void. The subsequent marriage will be null and void because the first wife would not have agreed or would not have given the consent. So for the husband to continue and get married to the other woman depends on what the first wife says. So if the first wife says, I don't want to, unfortunately, there is nothing that the husband can do. And the only option is not just divorce. There's also the option that the husband can maybe just continue in a relationship with the other lady, but uh, not marry uh, that lady and... Uh, the lady will just be a, a girlfriend indefinitely or the parties can just uh, terminate their relationship and the husband can continue with his wife. But for the Tizonga uh, custom, you must know that the wife is the one who I can say holds the key for the husband as to whether he can continue to enter into another marriage or, or, or not. Okay, do you understand, uh, Alex? Let's take Palisa. Yeah, no, it's complicated. Okay, Palisa. Hello, ma'am, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay, ma'am, uh, please write down my question also. It's not related to what you are saying now. Okay. I just want to know if you are going to be touching on the WHP case, the Zambo versus Sangadi, the 2020 judgment, and please, if we can discuss in terms of they don't recognize the handing over as a requirement, uh, handing over the brand as a requirement, and also how they dealt with the celebration of the marriage. So that my question is, does it mean that only um, uh, uh, the lobola that it's considered if you've lobola it, then it means that you are automatically married. We no longer give a reference to the ending over and the celebration. Thank you, ma'am. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, let me uh, continue and talk about the position of polygamous uh, marriages that were entered into before the coming into the act. When the act was passed, uh, the provision stated that the position of polygamous or polygamous marriages that were entered into before the act continue to be regulated by customary law. This uh, has uh, been changed by the Constitutional Court in the case of Ramu Hovi versus President of uh, the Republic of South Africa, where they declared Section 7, Subsection 1 of the Act unconstitutional. So the position uh, now uh, is, as uh, proposed by the Constitutional Court, is polygamous marriages that were entered into uh, before they coming into the act. Né? Distribution or the proprietary consequences, uh, I have to be dealt with uh, one, wives and husbands will have joint equal ownership, management and control over the matrimonial property dependent on the nature of the matrimonial property. Secondly, the wife of the, the wife of the house and her husband will have joint ownership, management and control of the house. The property must be administered for the benefit of the particular house. This basically means that you know when we talk about a proper polygam, let's uh, look at the, uh, into the rural areas. In the rural areas you will find a husband who has a big Big land, and in that big land, there's the main house where he stays, and then there's uh, these other houses where the first wife stays, the second wife stays, and the third wife uh, stays. So this uh, says that uh, number B says that the wife in let's say a uh, house A. Uh, with the husband, they will have joint ownership and management and control over that house property. And then house B with wife number two, wife number three, and the husband. So wife who uh, is in control of house number A is not in control of house number B. And then these two wives are also not in control of house number uh, number C. So this is not like the polygamy that we see in the urban areas where the husband and the wives and everything they are staying in the same house. A proper polygamy, each and every uh, wife has their own house or they have their own uh, houses and there is the main house where the husband stays and where all his wife uh, also have access to that. And number three, the Constitutional Court says that all wives and their husband will have joint equal ownership, management, and control over the family property. The property must be administered for the benefit of the family. So this is the main house, which is uh, the family house where the husband stays and where all these wives have equal powers over that main property. And lastly, the court uh, said that each spouse retains exclusive right to her or his property. So in if uh, in each and every house that these wives uh, actually stays and administers, uh, all their personal properties, their furniture and everything belong to that specific spouse. But the properties in the main house, which will say is where the husband stays, all the wives have equal control over it. Uh, the legislation, uh, uh, the legislators have now passed the recognition of customary marriages amendment act and it commenced from the 1st of June 2021. This act uh, has now changed most of the provisions from the initial recognition act. So, uh, how polygamous uh, how po polygamous marriages are administered, it is now legislated and it is now in terms of those acts. Monogamous uh, customary marriages, it is now legislated that they are automatically in community of property. So does anybody have any question?
regarding polygamous marriages before we touch other aspects of customary marriages. Can I take it that we are all uh, okay? Ngosi Zungu? Ngosi Zungu? Yes, ma'am. Where, where I got confused uh, a little bit by your presentation mm -hmm. uh, was when you said that uh, you could have two marriage uh, regimes. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, uh, I, I got very, very confused especially if the husband has not gone to court uh, to seek the change, uh, you know, uh, to seek the change of the antinuptial anti contract, you know. So I got confused when you said you could have uh, two marriage regimes, you know. Okay, okay, let me explain that. In terms of section seven, subsection six of the act, a husband or a man who wants to take a further wife and who got married uh, from, uh, from the year 15 November 2000 to date, before he can take another wife, he needs to bring in a court application and request the court to approve the marriage contract which will regulate his marriage. Remember, we said monogamous customary marriages are automatically in community of property. So let's say it is Tabo who is married to Lerato, and it's just the two of them, and their marriage is in community of property. If Tabo now wants to take Balisa as another wife and uh, he firstly needs to apply to court and uh, when applying to court he must present the marriage the drafted marriage contract which will regulate his polygamy marriage this is because firstly uh, polygamous marriages are not in committee of property and cannot be in committee of property because in committee of property is joint estate where it is 50 50 so where it is now more than two people it cannot be 50 50. so if the husband does not bring in a court application the supreme court of appeal has held that that polygamous marriage uh, continue to be regarded as valid ne, as long as it was properly entered into. But when it comes to the marriage regime, the husband Tabo and his first wife Lerato, their marriage will continue to be in community of property. And Tabo's husband and his marriage to Palisa will be out of community of property. So Tabo is married to Lerato and Balisa, but with Lerato, the marriage regime is in community of property, and with Balisa, the marriage regime is out of community of property. So this is a polygamous marriage involving three individuals. Uh, let's assume it is the latest one who stay in the urban areas. They live in the same house. But uh, there is two marriage regimes that regulate Tabo's marriage because of his failure to comply with Section 7, Subsection 6 of the Act. Do you understand? Yes, uh, I, I do. Uh, I am clear now because uh, uh, in the event of the division of the estate, Mm -hmm. The second wife will have a claim uh, in the divided estate of the husband. Uh, I don't know if uh, you understand me. From the reading of the material, uh, it was said that uh, that's where the second wife may have a remedy. Uh, I, I hope I'm clear. Okay. The second wife, if the marriage is out of community, of property. Remember, uh, there is no division of the joint estate. The second wife uh, will have a claim 
for a, what is it, a spousal maintenance, but in customary marriages, irrespective of when the marriage was entered into, spouses are allowed to, to ask for redistribution of assets. So the second wife can have a claim over the estate of the husband if she gets an order from the court to read for the husband to redistribute some of his estate. But the challenge now is the husband's estate is a joint estate. It's an estate between him and Lirato. So when the court redistributes, that is where the challenge is going to be because it will not only be taken from a tabo or the husband's estate, it will also be taken from Lerato, the first wife's estate, and Lerato is not espoused to Balisa. You understand? That is where the challenge is now, with a, with a, when the husband uh, has two marriage regimes and uh, there is a divorce. Unfortunately, now there is no uh, a court judgment or a precedent that guides us as to uh, how will the court deal with the issue where the subsequent wife uh, is filing for divorce and is asking for redistribution of assets. Will the court claim from the joint estate of the parties or will the court say we are only going to take from 50% share of the husband and when the husband and the first wife eventually uh, terminate their marriage, there will be an adjustment so that the first wife is not unduly prejudiced by the husband who did not uh, comply with section seven, subsection six. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, uh, we can continue. It's me. Uh, okay, who's saying it's me? Uh, oh, who's it's saying it's Alex. me? It's Alex. Okay, okay. Uh, you are done, Alex, right? <laughs> no, no, oh, not okay. That. I just wanted quickly, when we were talking about section 76, I just want to read one statement in under that section 76. Uh, verbatim as it is. It says if the existing customary marriage is in committee of property or subject to accrual system, the court must terminate the matrimonial property system and effect division of property. Mm -hmm. Yes, just to uh, okay. Just I just want to understand it because vis a vis what we have actually explained uh, okay. on that in terms of that section. Okay. Let's say uh, the husband brings in a court application. So because uh, the role of the court is to approve the marriage contract and is not to terminate the marriage. So the court firstly has to make sure that the division or the marriage regime of Tabo and the first wife, Lerato, it is terminated and Lerato will be given her 50% share from the joint estate and Tabo will be given his 50% share of the joint estate. And when the polygamous marriage now continues, it's going to start on a clean slate with this court-approved marriage, uh, yeah, the court-approved contract. So before the court can approve this contract that Tabo is saying, this is what is going to regulate this polygamous marriage. The court firstly has to make sure that the, the current marriage regime that is regulating the uh, what uh, has been a monogamous marriage is terminated. So they just terminate and divide the joint estate, but the marriage, it is not terminated. Do you understand? Yeah, no, no, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks. It's clear. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm going to answer the question of consent uh, when uh, one of the parties no longer wants to continue with the marriage. Firstly, it needs to be determined as to whether has the parties entered into a valid customary marriage 
or are the parties still in the process of entering into a marriage, meaning that they are still engaged. If the parties are still engaged, then uh, everybody or each partner is free to let the other one know and the family that I no longer want to continue with the marriage. We have to note that engagement is a, a promise to get married, but it is not necessarily a marriage itself. And the law as it said, anybody has a right to terminate an engagement without suffering any consequences. The only exception is if uh, the parties had already progressed so far with their engagement, they had already spent money and then termination of the marriage is going to result in economic loss. So the innocent uh, spouse can sue uh, the other party for the financial loss that has resulted from terminating of the engagement. But if the parties are already in an existing customary marriage, but one of the parties no longer wants to continue, then they need to file for divorce and terminate the marriage at court. We need to note that customary marriages can only be terminated by a court of law. Uh, informal meetings by family members do not result in a formal terminated or in a legally recognized termination of a customary marriage. So I hope I answered your question because it will depend on whether are the parties uh, still engaged or have the parties entered into a valid customary marriage? And if it's a valid customary marriage, informal separations are not legally recognized. The marriage must be terminated at court. There must be a, a divorce degree. Okay, Tolu Fellow? Tolu Fellow, please unmute yourself. Yes. Morning, ma'am. I just want to find out now if they have... Um, the, the, the court has uh, uh, registered the, I mean, has terminated the, the first marriage and then the, the, the degree of divorce has been uh, ordered. So does this mean then the husband is going to now share the remaining 50% with only the, the second wife, the one that he's going to marry uh, using customary marriage? Okay, firstly, we need to note that when the court terminates a marriage and a divorce degree is issued, you regain your status of being single. And then if you marry again, the marriage regime that you enter into will uh, determine whether the spouse uh, enters uh, is going to get uh, assets from your estate or not. So let's say in a polygamous marriage, uh, the husband divorces with the first wife, but uh, the parties decide to enter into a polygamous marriage, all three of them. So the question now is going to be, did the husband comply with Section 7, Subsection 6 of the Act? If the husband did not comply with that, the first marriage is going to be in community of property, and that will be the first wife who was married. So if the husband divorces the first wife, and then let's say, he enters into a customary marriage first with the girlfriend and then subsequently marries uh, the other woman who initially was his first wife. The girlfriend will now uh, get 50% share from his estate and the second lady, uh, the initial first wife, uh, her marriage will be automatically out of community of property. Understand. So, uh, what you need to understand here is, firstly, who was married first? Was the marriage entered into uh, in compliance with the act? And did the husband also get a court-approved contract before uh, entering into a polygamous marriage? If he did not do so, then one, the first wife is COP, 
the other wife is OCOP. There is not even an accrual uh, process, but if uh, the husband gets a court approved contract, then that will regulate the marriage. I hope Thank you, you answered that. Okay, anybody else? Okay, uh, let's continue. There was a question uh, regarding uh, the case of HAP, the Zambo case. The Zambo case relates to the requirements of customary marriages that were entered into after the coming into act, and more specifically, uh, more specifically, they relate. Uh, they relate to requirement number three, which is the marriage must be negotiated and entered into or celebrated in accordance with customary law. The Supreme Court of Appeal had ruled that or ruled that spouses uh, can enter into or can have an informal uh, handing over process. Uh, the facts of the HAP was that uh, there was a, a celebration or a mini celebration that was done, but it was done from the wife's side of the family. Nothing was done from the husband's side or from the deceased uh, side of the family. And the deceased family was arguing that we had not handed over uh, this wife or we had not uh, regarded her as our wife, uh, as our Makoti, because the process was not fully uh, complied with. The Supreme Court of Appeal did not agree with them, as in the case, uh, as in the latest case uh, of uh, what is it, of Mbungela versus Mgabi, uh, where they held that the handing over of the bride, it is not necessarily a key to a marriage being regarded as a valid customary marriage. So the question now is, if a man pays half lobola or just pays lobola and nothing else is done, can that be regarded as a valid customary marriage? And the answer to this will depend on a case-by-case -case basis. It's going to depend on what is the agreement between the parties. Have the parties and the family members agreed that you know, uh, we are going to either have an informal handing over whereby we just agree verbally that uh, after the payment of this lobolo, we are going to give our blessings and uh, agree that the parties can either continue living together if they were in a cohabitation relationship and live together as husband and wife, or if they were not living together, we release them to start living together as husband and wife. In other cases, the parties can agree that after uh, the payment of this lobolo, uh, there is still uh, some process that needs to be done. For example, maybe there's still some slaughtering that must be done or what. So it's going to depend on the facts of each case and also on the custom. What is the living custom? in that uh, community. For example, if uh, Mpo El Nerato, if Mpo El Tavo and uh, say that we come from this uh, area and then when we enter into a customary marriage in this area, we don't do this uh, slaughtering, we don't do all of these things. After uh, Lobola has been paid, we just uh, uh, what is let's say we just drink uh, tea and after that uh, we regard this as a customary marriage. If in that community is how they do things, that uh, process can be regarded as a customary marriage. So as we are speaking now, there is not really a space, uh, there is not really a yes answer or a no answer because. Uh, each and everything will depend on the face of each case. But what you must know is the handing over of the part is now no longer necessary, unless previous judgment, which had said that uh, for a marriage 
to be valid, the wife must be handed over or else there is no valid customary marriage. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have a question? Uh, I think I saw the hands of Darlene. Uh, Darlene, do you have a question? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know regarding, uh, I mean, during the divorce proceedings, um, yes. the wife can apply for interim re relief, which I think it's rule 43. Is that yes. only applicable to the first wife or can the second and third wife also apply for it if they are going through divorce proceedings? Any spouse who's in a valid customary marriage can enter into it but uh, the court have held that even if there is a dispute as to whether there is a valid uh, customary marriage or not a spouse can apply for rule 43 a high court and then in the regional court is rule 58 so anybody can apply including the husband thank you okay uh, i saw Zungu, Ngosi Zungu. Zungu, uh, please unmute yourself. Ngosi Zungu. Okay, we are moving. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to support your statement, the, the issue of the particular circumstances of the case or case by case uh, basis. Because, uh, for example, you might find that the, the only thing that is holding uh, the ceremony uh, from taking place uh, maybe is the availability of the parties, you know. Uh, maybe the murder of the bride uh, is not well, and, and, and that, is only, uh, that is only that factual circumstance that is holding the ceremony from taking place. So the court obviously will look at what is to the advantage of all the parties, uh, what is to the advantage maybe of the kids, if there are kids uh, that are involved. So it if it was a question of the availability of the parties uh, preventing the ceremony uh, from taking place, obviously the court will come to the conclusion that that marriage, that marriage is valid, uh, in my view. So I support you when you say that it will be a case by case uh, basis. Uh, thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, Palisa? OK, ma'am, I just want to ask something. So uh, two questions. If uh, in the double HP case, if they did not do the celebration, would the case to, would have to, taken a different turn in terms of not validating that the marriage was um, valid. Okay. And number two, someone who is uh, Zulu married in, in, in KZN, as I would, maybe the Zulus will correct me, I would believe that the process of Umembeso would render the marriage uh, valid or it does not matter on that part. Like you saying, it depends geographically in the community as to where is it, uh, where you are married. Would you have any idea as to, in terms of the Zulus, how would the marriage be validated? Thank you. Okay, uh, it depends where you live, and uh, the court look at what we call a living customary law. That is, what uh, are the parties and the community currently practicing? So. Even in, uh, uh, let's say, in, in KwaZulu Natal, and uh, a high number of spouses still do the umembezo and other customary processes. If a certain uh, family, they decide that we are not going to do that, let's say for financial reasons, but they uh, decide that we will just have an informal and a uh, a non-celebratory uh, customary marriage that will also still be allowed as long as in court it can be proven that they and uh, the families themselves agreed that all these other 
customary processes, we do not have to enter into them. But as the family, we bless uh, the couple and uh, we did a uh, paper and uh, all those uh, smaller nyana and then informal uh, processes that can also lead to a valid customary marriage. But as I said, the court will look at the specific circumstances of that case. So although a uh, living customary law says, look at what is uh, currently being practice by the communities uh, in the society. That does not mean that uh, if there are parties who did not follow the specific process, that marriage will uh, will not, uh, what is it, that marriage will not be rendered a valid customary marriage. So it is up to the parties themselves. Is one party a uh, says we do not enter into a valid customary marriage. It is up to the other party to prove that we entered into a valid customary marriage even though we did not comply with all the processes that are done by the Zulus or even with living customary uh, marriage. Also, the families can just look at what they do just in their homes that when we enter into a marriage, we don't, uh, we don't believe in wasting money uh, if uh, they use such weight that, you know what, instead of spending money and doing this ceremony, instead of spending money and then buying cows and then slaughtering, we just go to uh, the butchery, just buy some meat and then just do a smaller thing. And then the money which were supposed to be used for the celebration, we give it to the party so that they can start their life, they can buy their house, they can buy all of those things. So uh, those are some of the things that the court take into account that, okay, the, the, the parties did not do this party. Uh, can we really say they did not not enter into a valid customary marriage. And uh, on the HAP, I really wouldn't know if uh, only Lobolo was paid and nothing else was done, uh, whether the court would have said uh, there is still a valid uh, customary marriage because uh, for the wife, that small celebration or that small uh, ceremony that was held at a, her family's place, played a very key role in making sure that uh, she is regarded as a as a wife. Uh, as a wife. Having said that, remember I said there are three requirements. The first requirement of AG, that one is not a problem. The other requirement, which is problematic and which is linked to the third requirement, is the one of consent. You know, uh, most of us are aware that. Uh, a high number of black spouses or of black uh, people, when they enter into a marriage, they will do uh, the traditional marriage and they will do what we commonly call a white wedding. And you must note that a white wedding is normally a process that leads to a civil marriage and you enter into a marriage in terms of the marriage act. And there is a the customary marriage, which is regulated by the customary marriages act. So if the parties uh, do these two processes and one party says we entered into a customary marriage and the other party will say, but our intention was not to have a valid, uh, to enter into a customary marriage. This was the first step towards us entering into a civil marriage. This uh, causes usually a problem, and this is again another requirement which the court look at it on a case by case basis. There has been cases of judgment whereby, whereby uh, the customary law process was done, but the court held that this. Uh, is not a valid customary marriage because the parties 
they will not agree to enter into a customary law marriage. Instead, they were just doing this uh, to appease the ancestors, to just give respect to their family members. And, and there are also judgments whereby uh, even though the parties agreed, the parties agreed that we are going to enter into a civil or a marriage in terms of the marriage act because of the customary law process that uh, were held, the marriage was declared to be a valid customary marriage. So this, again, it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. Unfortunately, customary marriages at the present moment, uh, they are a bit of a challenge. They are a bit of a challenge because uh, one cannot say for sure that uh, because Lobolo was paid for you, uh, indeed, you are going to be regarded as you are in a valid customary marriage. It will depend on how you present your case at court and if the other uh, person or the other spouse, uh, if they are not able to convince the court that a valid customary marriage was not entered into, uh, a valid customary marriage was entered into, uh, the, the judge or the court will rule in the favor of the one who managed it to convince, yeah, to convince a court uh, not beyond reasonable doubt. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Zanelle, Zanelle, you are the one who just asked a question, right? Zanelle? Oh, it was Palisa. Okay, thank you. Uh, Zanelle, I hope you are covered, Palisa. Uh, Zanelle? Yes, ma'am, yes. Okay, Zanelle? Uh, ma'am, I do have two questions that I need to ask. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, okay. Let's say, just like you've said, that Tabo and Palisa um married, customarily married. But in my scenario, the, this is what happens. Um, Tabo only pays Lobola for Balisa and, and half of the Lobola. Then after that, they go to court and then they sign. Mm -hmm. Will it be valid as a uh, customary marriage or not? Or it will be a civil marriage. And then after some time, Tabo did, um, tells Balisa that he wants to take a second wife. And then that second wife, he... He pays full lobola and then all the necessary um, agreement uh, and the ceremonies happen. So which marriage will be um, the civil one? Will it be between Palisa and Tabo and then Tabo and the other wife? Will it be the customary marriage? How will that happen, ma'am? Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, we need to note that a man, although Lobola is part and parcel of customary marriages, a man does not necessarily have to physically pay the money for the marriage to be declared to be a customary marriage. Just a, a declaration that I will pay Lobolo can actually lead to a valid customary marriage. And regarding paying half Lobola and going and signing at court, it will depend on whether the parties is signed a, a civil marriage or signed a, a customary marriage. The marriage certificates are the same. The only difference is one is written civil and one is written customer. So let's assume that uh, they entered into a civil marriage. So if they entered into a civil marriage, the husband cannot take another wife. If they entered into a customary marriage, and the husband or uh, the wife goes and enters into another marriage, but this time a civil marriage. The civil marriage will be null and void. But if the husband enters into another customary marriage, even though he has a marriage certificate that says customary, the subsequent wife's marriage will be valid if a uh, the legal requirements of entering into a customary marriage were complied with. But the marriage regime will automatically be out of community of property unless if the husband complied uh, with section seven, subsection six. So just to sum up uh, your answer, it will depend 
uh, which marriage regime did the parties enter into when they went to home affairs? And then uh, that one is the one that's going to determine who uh, is actually the valid spouse or not. And then secondly, which marriage regime is going to regulate their marriage. But you must know or you must remember that if you go and sign at the Department of Home Affairs without an antinatal contact, the marriage will automatically be income dropped. But, but let's say uh, it's the husband who has or who is in an existing unregistered customary marriage. And because it is unregistered, Home Affairs does not have a record that shows that the husband is married and the husband goes and enters into a civil marriage with another wife and they have a marriage certificate. This civil marriage will be null and void because the unregistered customary marriage was entered first. But if the husband enters into a civil marriage first uh, with this wife and then goes and enters into an unregistered uh, customary marriage. That customary marriage will be null and void because there is an existing uh, civil law spouse. So in order to determine who is the legally recognized valid customary law spouse, the answer is it is the one who was married first and who was legally married first, that uh, will give you the answer. Okay, uh, are you covered, Sanel? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay. Uh, lastly, we'll take Alex. Alex, please unmute yeah, yourself. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to clarity on the the uh, Lobola issue. I think that will be my last question. The Lobola issue. If for 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 whatever reasons the Lobola is paid, uh, all process were followed. But unfortunately, is that uh, that uh, kind of marriage has not been registered with the Home Affairs. When you had to, when you go for for a divorce for whatever reasons, uh, are we? Uh, are we into the court? The court has to to nullify that particular arrangement that was made before, even though it was not registered with the Department of Home Affairs. Okay, uh, as I stated, customary marriages, whether unregistered or registered, they have to be uh, terminated by a court of law. In an unregistered uh, customary marriage, you firstly need to prove that you are in a customary marriage before the court can terminate a marriage. Remember, for uh, in the divorce court or in the high court, before uh, the court can terminate the marriage, the court firstly needs to know or you need to prove that there is an existing marriage. So the marriage certificate is proof, conclusive proof that the parties are married. If there is no marriage certificate, you prove by uh, to, uh, submitting affidavit, submitting uh, copies of photos uh, of the customary uh, marriage celebration. And uh, if there is a dispute, you have to bring in witnesses. And that is how uh, currently the courts are dealing with it. Uh, in terms of our court system, both the High Court and the Regional Court uh, now have uh, the powers to terminate uh, marriages. Or oh, The High Court have always had them. The Regional Court have the powers to terminate uh, customary marriages. But uh, most major magistrates are reluctant to actually uh, adjudicate matters where there is an unregistered uh, which involves an unregistered customary marriage. So what the courts usually do is they will uh, advise the parties to go to home affairs, register the marriage, and then come back to court and uh, conclude a termination of the divorce uh, or of the marriage. Please note that uh, this is something that they are doing themselves, but uh, it's not really regulated by law because there is no provision in the Divorce Act or in any other act which uh, 
requires the magistrate to firstly instruct uh, the litigant to go and get uh, the may to go and have the marriage registered first and then come to court and finalize uh, the divorce. Other uh, magistrates, they do go ahead with terminations of uh, unregistered uh, customary marriages, but we are now seeing a high number of magistrates who are unwilling to actually entertain it. And if you don't have a, a copy of the marriage regime, of the marriage certificate, they will just tell the uh, parties that, you know what, they just need to go to the High Court. The High Court does not require the parties to submit the marriage certificate, but they require the parties to prove that they entered into a valid customary marriage. If you cannot prove that you entered into a valid customary marriage, the court will not adjudicate the divorce. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Daniel van Veek. Hi, ma'am. I just want to, I have to go now, so I just want to make sure of one thing. I saw on our um, time schedule that the exam for this module is on 3 December. I just want to make sure if that is correct. Okay, I cannot confirm that at the present moment. All I can say is uh, please be on the lookout for announcement. Then if uh, there is a possibility that uh, the date may change, but I don't want to confirm anything at the present moment. So just please, uh, on a daily basis in the morning and uh, in the evening, just make sure that you check uh, the announcement uh, section uh, so that you know exactly on which date you're going to write the exam. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the class. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, Okay, students, as uh, I said at the beginning that I did a summary of customary marriages and uh, I've divided them regarding customary marriages that were entered into before and after the commencement of the act and then information regarding a uh, registration. Uh, please remember that customary marriages uh, remain to be legally recognized even if they are unregistered. And uh, the period of registration has been extended now up until 30 June 2024. And, and oh yeah, here non-registration uh, does not invalidate uh, marriages. And then here uh, I've summarized the patrimonial consequences of a customary marriage, monogamous customary marriage, uh, polygamous uh, customary uh, marriages and uh, here alteration if you are married in community of property and you want to change from in community of property to out of community of property and then here is termination of a customary marriage uh, by divorce uh, termination uh, by death and then here is the coexistence of a customary marriage and a civil marriage or a civil union remember a civil marriage you see uh cannot coexist with any other marriage and then they are monogamous. Customary marriage is the same, cannot coexist with any other marriage uh, system, but uh, customary marriages are not monogamous. And then here I just uh, did a summary of uh, uh, the important cases that actually changed uh, the position in customary marriages. Yeah. And lastly, students, uh, good luck uh, for your exam. Good luck as you are studying. As I said, please, on a daily basis, keep on checking the date when you are going to write uh, the exam. But in the meantime, just uh, keep on studying and yeah, all the best for your exam. We have come to the end of today's session. And if you have any other questions or if you want to speak to me privately, feel free to send me an email. I will write my email address on the chat system. And yeah, uh, all the best and goodbye for today. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.